Welcome to Serial Horror with Bobby, a channel for the horror enthusiasts. Today's Serial Killer Sunday episode is about a crazed woman who killed three people and a wrongfully convicted man. Her victims included her best friend and the other was her own mother. And then she tried to kill herself when she knew she was caught. Are you ready? Let's get right into it. It's just two days after Christmas in 2011 in Troy, Missouri, when Russ Faria arrives at his home on a Tuesday evening to discover his wife's bloody body laying dead in their living room floor. His wife, Betsy Faria, just 50 years old, was terminally ill with cancer, but cancer wasn't what killed her. Betsy was stabbed to death. She had 55 stab wounds and a kitchen knife was still stuck in her neck. She had gashes on her arms and wrists. Russ, overcome by shock, thought his wife committed suicide. He dialed 911, but when the first responders arrived, they knew this was not a suicide, but a homicide. Detectives quickly eyed Russ as the killer. Although Russ had several alibis because he was at a game with friends that evening. He had four witnesses that corroborated his story. However, detectives never looked at anyone else. Elizabeth, known as Betsy K. Faria, was married to Russell Faria over a decade. She had two daughters from a period previous marriage, Leah and Mariah. In 2010, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. A year later, she learned it spread to her liver. The day Betsy died, Pam showed up at Betsy's mom's house. Pam is her friend. After her chemotherapy appointment and insisted she drive her home. She drops her off, waited till Betsy became weak and lethargic from chemo when she began stabbing her repeatedly as she lay defenseless on the couch. She then took the victim's socks, dipped it in blood, and spread it all over the house to make it look like it was a domestic violence assault. Russ was arrested and charged with his wife's murder just eight days later. Although they never found a drop of blood on him, aside from a few drops on his shoes or his slippers, Russ goes on trial in 2013. The prosecution's key witness is none other than the actual killer herself, Pam Hub. Pam tells her fabricated story that Betsy confided in her that Russ had a bad temper and she wanted to change her $150,000 insurance policy to her being the sole beneficiary because she was afraid Russ would, quote, piss the money away, unquote. Yeah, now we have the well-known murder motive, right? That insurance policy. So it just happens and conveniently that she had changed the policy just four days before her murder. Why Betsy chose to change it from her husband to Pam is really unknown. She goes on to say she told Pam she wanted for her to hold the money and put it in a trust for when the girls got old enough. She goes on to testify that Russ's motive was the insurance policy, that Betsy was to tell Russ about the change of the beneficiary that night when he got home, and that's what set him off. Now, the daughters never saw a penny of that money, but we'll get into that a little later. So fast forward to 2013. Russ is found guilty of murdering his wife, and his attorney, Joe Schwartz, quickly files a motion for a new trial, claiming evidence was suppressed, and he really wanted to point the finger at Pam, which jurors never got to hear anything about because 
police and the prosecution were convinced it was Russ. He was granted a new trial and was exonerated after spending two years in prison in a wrongful conviction. His exoneration led to a whole new twist in this story. While Russ was serving his time in prison, another mysterious death occurs linked to Pam. In 2013, a woman by the name of Shirley Newman falls to her death from her third floor balcony. Originally, her death was determined an accident. It was not until after certain events led investigators to reevaluate and her death was changed to undetermined. Shirley had a daughter. Her daughter brought her home from the hospital the day Shirley died and was last to see her alive. Shirley had a $5,000 insurance policy. Do you see any similarities here? Yes, her daughter is Pam Hupp. When investigators took another look at her death, they find that Shirley had eight times the dose of Ambien in her body. The patio entrance was wide open and the balcony bars were bent and broken. Now, how does a 77 year old fragile lady with dementia have the capability to do this just by falling over? Let's move two months after Russ's release. I know this seems like it's all over the place and that's because it is, but it's leading somewhere, I promise. So Russ is now out of prison and trying to live his best life. When the focus now for Betsy's murder has now changed to Pam. She is now under a microscope for her best friend's slain. Now, in order to deter this attention from her, she plots to frame Russ yet again. She comes up with this elaborate scheme that Russ is out to get her to recoup the insurance money by hiring a hitman to kidnap her and force and get the money from her. She sets her plot and begins to act it out. She starts to drive around low-income neighborhoods looking for her victims, or her one victim, rather. She is posing as a Dateline producer, offering money for an actor to reenact a 911 call for the show. On August 16, 2016, Louis Gumpenberger came face to face with evil and met his fate. Louis was a single dad with disabilities, took her up on her offer, and the two headed back to her house. Hub acted out the scene by actually calling 911 to report an active break-in at her home. 911, what's your emergency? Hey, hello, there's someone broken in my house. Help! What's the address you're at? Get out! Well, please, did you leave your wife? No, I'm not getting in the car with you. No, get away. Get out, get out, get out. took advantage of a poor innocent man to just fatally shoot him. When police arrived at her house, they found Lewis dead from five gunshot wounds, a knife, money, and a note. The note instructed to kidnap Hub, get Russ's money at her bank, and kill Hub to make it look like Russ's wife. On August 23, 2016, Pam was finally arrested and charged with first degree murder. While being questioned at the police station, she asked to visit the bathroom in an attempt to, well, commit suicide. A little cowardly act. August 16th, 2016, O'Fallon, Missouri police arrested Pam Hupp for the murder of Lewis Gumpenberger. Only Fox 2 captured the arrest on camera. Police drove her into headquarters to hear more of her claim it was self-defense. An officer brings her into the interview room. Officers cannot immediately reach her attorney. They read up her rights. Do you have the right to remain silent? 
and they ask her to initial she understands. Officers leave again to try her attorney. Can see we can all them. Hup touches her neck, slowly, feeling both sides. You can see how she's thinking about what's next. She knows she's on camera, so she's subtle. Watch this. Hup grabs the water bottle to hide the pen, then slides both back, slowly, casually. She takes the pen behind her to hide it in her pants, then her neck again. It appears she's looking for her jugular or another vein she's about to strike with the pen. That's where she's escorted to the bathroom, where she stabs herself. There's an officer here. There's another officer that's going to escort you to the bathroom. Okay. About five minutes pass when you can hear officers yelling. These evidence photos show how she stabbed herself, her neck, both sides, and strikes to both wrists. Too many to count. In December 2016, Hupp was indicted and prosecutors were seeking the death penalty. Hupp's trial was set for June 2019 for Lewis's murder. She entered into an Alfred plea. An Alfred plea is accepting that the state has enough evidence to convict you of murder. So as a condition of her plea, the death penalty was dropped. She was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. And as for the Faria's insurance money, Hop testified that it was in a trust fund, but never took any steps to hand it over. It's speculated that Hop spent it all. There are so many twists and turns in the story because Pam has gaslighted the event so many times. So who really knows what the truth really is? Now on this channel, I like to update on the status of these murder houses that I cover. Most, however, get demolished, but the Faria house sold in September of last year for $260,000. And this concludes this episode of Serial Killer Sunday. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Toodles!